everyone, it's Tammy, and for this week's card, I'm going to teach you how to make an acetate card. Uh, and this is an acetate card. It is made of acetate, which is the same stuff that you use for shaker cards, or some people call it window paper. Um, and you can just make a card with it, which I think is super cute. And then when you open it up, it looks like this, so it's kind of neat that it's like a clear card. And um, we are going to make one. So the first thing that you need is a piece of the acetate, and this can be purchased at any of the craft stores or Stampin' Up! sells it. Um, I know that Stampin' Up! calls it window sheets. So it's the same, it's just plastic. And I've already cut this because I used the whole sheet to make both cards, so I just scored it at four and a quarter and it's cut at five and a half. So it's just a regular A2 sized card and you can treat it just like a card and you can fold it. Now it is a little tougher and sometimes you have to be a little careful because it will leave fingerprints. So sometimes I like to touch it as little as possible, but clearly when you're making a card, you have to touch it. So I can still use my bone folder on it, crisp up the edge. It won't be quite as crisp. Well, actually this one did, so I'll just shut up. <laughs> it folds very well and it stays folded, which is very nice. Now during the card process, I do want to kind of play with it a little bit and make it because I'll show you but you're going to want to use both sides to make sure that you have all of the squares even so that you don't see like I can see the first layer and I can see the red layer and I can see the sparkly layer but I don't see the inside does that make sense you want to be able to hide that inside white box from the front and I'm going to do a card very similar to the one that I just did. And to show you guys a little bit better, I'm going to put this piece of white underneath it because I think that that helps you to see the actual card. So the first thing that we need to do is stamp on this card. And to stamp on acetate, you really have to use like stays on ink. You need something that will totally stick. And I don't know anything else but stays on. So I would just recommend the stays on. Now this is opaque white. I know that they have all different colors of stays on. You could use any color that you'd like. Um, I only have this color and white or and black, and I thought that the white would be cool against the uh, birthday theme that I'm sticking with for this card too. I'm actually going to use the same stamp set that I used for the demo card for this card as well. And I'm just taking the white stays on ink and I am just going to stamp it all the way around the edges of the card. And you kind of twist it to make it so it's not all just a pattern. You want it to look kind of haphazardly put on here because you just want it to look like it's a celebration. Maybe I should have picked a colored cardstock so you guys could see a little better. I don't know. That might show up a little better. You can see the white. So I'm just, like I said, just turning it and twisting it so that I can get the whole outside of the area covered in confetti to celebrate the birthday. Then I'm just leaving the middle part open like that. And 
Now I'm going to wipe this off. And the best way that I have found to wipe off stays on ink is to bring the cleaner that I have to the ink to the stamp set it's to the stamp itself and then spray that and then I'll take a baby wipe and clean this and then once I get it as clean as I can get it with the baby wipe then I'll put it in my scrubber to get all the residue off but it's not going to ever come completely clean because that stays on ink will stay on So it came pretty clean, but you can see how there's still some ink on there, and that's just the way it will be. And it won't harm the stamp at all, it's just discolored. So now I can put, let me just get this out of the way, I can move this, put this out of the way, and then I'm going to Cut the rest of my paper so let's see what did I do I need um, I'm going to use whisper white and then I'm going to use something for the background some sparkly paper I have some over here, I might use this rose gold. I think I will. I'll use rose gold. I'm trying to see what I have over here and my scraps that I can use up. I have some more of that holographic red, but I don't know if I like that with this. Do I like the red with the gold? Or maybe just the red? maybe pink yeah I think I'll do these colors okay so what that means is I need to do to do to do how do I want to do this I think I want white on the outside with my image on it and then I'll do pink behind it and then I'll do white here and rose gold here so the biggest piece I need is the rose gold piece and for the one that I used is three by three you don't have to use the exact same measurements but they have to be incrementally smaller than each other or bigger however you want to look at it so I'm gonna make this three by three. Oh, well that wasn't very good I didn't cut it all the way through three by three And then I want a piece of whisper white to be two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Two and three quarters by two and three quarters, sorry. And then I want the pink to be the same size as that. Two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And then I want the final piece of Whisper White to be two and a half by two and a half. So it will look like this. That will be in the back. And then this will be like that, and then this will be on top. Okay, yes, I like that. Uh, 
Okay. So to do that, you should get, you. It, I guess you can use what you'd like, but I would suggest using glue dots. So I have some of those right here. And then I'd also suggest that you do your stamping first so that you have it all ready. So when you're putting it on the card, it's pretty much good to go. So let's go ahead and stamp. I'm going to stamp on this one and then I'm going to stamp on this one or you could leave the inside one blank and have it be, you know, just what you write on. And I'm using this cute stamp set by the Cat's Pajamas and it is an older set. I don't know how long I've had it, but I've had it in my stash. And I like this penguins with the cupcake and I think that it will fit. Yes, indeed. just going to stamp that down. Cute. And then on the inside, what should I put? I think I'll just put, it says, do I smell cake? I think I'll put that. All right. Now I'm gonna put this away. And I guess I don't need this ink either. So I'm just going to quickly color this and I want to kind of focus on that color pink. So I will make his icing like a strawberry icing. And well, let's see, I'll also do this hat with pink. And maybe the polka dots in this hat and the bow in this one. And then let's see, I'm going to use, I think I'll do these purple sprinkles. And I'm going to make the wrapper just brown down here. It will make it look like it's a chocolate cupcake maybe. which is what my family would prefer. And then I think I'm gonna use a lighter brown on the hat. I guess hats. 
and I'll use a lighter purple for the candle. And for the present, I didn't paint the whole ribbon or color the whole ribbon. Silly. Then the star and their little beaks and little feetsies. There we go. So now I'll take that acetate and I'm going to put this one on first. And I'm just going to take my glue dots and I'm putting one on each corner. And then I'm just going to center this and stick it down. And I don't even think it's centered. Oh goodness. You know what, I'm just gonna leave it because it's gonna be close enough. And then what I'm gonna do is this one's gonna go on that side, so I'm gonna have the, I'm gonna put my four squares of glue dots on this one. And then I'm just gonna turn it over and let it sit there for a minute. And then I'm taking my pink and I'm on the front of the pink, so the one that's going to be facing the front of the card, like this side is where I want to put the dots. And I want them to be a little bit in because this is a quarter of an inch smaller and I don't want to be able to see the dots. So I'm just going to move them in probably more than I need to, but that's okay. And then I'm going to take the rose gold one and I'm going to put those just like I did with the pink. I'm going to put it on the front of the rose golds because this is going to be stuck to the back of the card. And it's all to help create the illusion that the images are kind of just standing in the air all by themselves. So there's that one. And then so I'm going to take my pink and I'm going to center it behind it. And the best way to do that, at least in my opinion, is to kind of line it up in the front of the card. And then I take my pokey tool and I just kind of move it until it's where I think it should be. And if you hold on one of those glue dots, you can really position it a lot easier. So then when I have those stuck, I can pull that off and then there it is stuck on there. So now you can see I have just a front image and then this paper stuck on the front of the card. So now I want this to match up with this, but it's going to be on the other side. So what I do is I turn it this way. I put this face down and I make sure that I have the words the way that I want them to be and I just simply line it up with this one and then I close the card on top. So now I have those and I know that that matches up perfectly. And then so finally I take this one and I kind of do the same thing. I take my little pokey tool, hold on to one of the glue dots and then just kind of make sure that I have it centered where I want it. And then push down. And that's it. That's the secret to getting all of these together where you can just see a little outline. And I think it's just really pretty. And then I put a ribbon on it just because I think it makes it look even neater. And I'm also going to, I'm gonna do it from the back side where I don't have ink. 
just so I won't pull it off. Close that a little tighter because then it just is a little nicer fold. And then let's take the ribbon if I can figure out where it starts. And I think I'm going to do it about to here. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. Okay, so I'm just making sure that this is where I want it to be. And I want my ribbon to be a little higher on this card, I think, instead of just in the middle. I don't know, just sometimes that's fun to do. So I'm going to tie it in a knot. And it's kind of a loose knot, so I can still play with it to make sure that it fits my card. And once I've done that, then I can tighten it just a little hair. And then I'm going to tie a bow. And then I'm going to just trim the uh, tails. And there we have it. Isn't that cute? Let's see, maybe if I put... Isn't that cute, cute, cute? Alright, so that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I hope that I taught you something and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.